And we have the bottle here on the left, right? I'm using this charcoal stick and pencil. Remember, these are pretty dirty. Um, notice how I have it all set on top of a piece of paper. You can, or you can do it directly on the table. It does come off. You just have to wipe it and put a little elbow grease into it. Um, the points on the pencils, do not sharpen them as pointy as you typically sharpen a regular pencil. It will break, right? Because this charcoal pencil is technically still the same thing that's in this uh, stick, but it's brittle, right? So it can easily uh, break off. You can sharpen it with a regular sharpener or you can just grab a um, an exacto knife or just a knife. Please don't grab a knife that your mom really likes or dad really likes from the kitchen because you're gonna ruin it, right? And so I tend to just use uh, my exacto knife to kind of get it a little more pointy, but being very careful. So some people like the pencil more than the stick just because it's a little cleaner, right? So I'm just gonna make it into a little bit better point. So remember, charcoal is super dark. It gets really dark really quick, right? <clears throat> but I like using the charcoal because you can get big areas really quick, right? So I'm actually gonna grab a regular piece, or a regular pencil. Um, let me do, I think I have an HB, here's an HB. And I'm gonna draw almost like a contour drawing or a sketch of the the bottle here on the left. Okay. And so we have, let me move this the bottle, and but I'm gonna make it bigger, right? It shouldn't be a tiny one. If you draw the bottle small on your paper, you're gonna have a hard time with the stick and the pencil. The bottle or the charcoal is also very useful when you are drawing something bigger on a piece of paper than something smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a very loose drawing. Um, even if you don't have the materials, the charcoal, you can definitely do this part with me. So that way when you go and pick up the charcoal, you already have this all drawn out. Okay, so this is again, almost like a contour drawing of the bottle that we're drawing. Right, so this is the bottom of it. Right, it's kind of like an oval. And I'm drawing it light because I also don't want it to show through as much. And if you notice, the bottom of the bottle is wider and then it tapers. Let me make it a little wider. And also be prepared to have your drawing hand a little dirty or messy with your fingers. Be mindful of what you're touching after because you're you're going to have charcoal on your hand. So might not want to be touching your phone during this because you'll get charcoal all over it as well as your face or your clothes. So make it a little wider and as I'm going up, actually I'm going to make it go in a little bit in here and then up. So the hard part about drawing the bottle is making sure that the neck is in the center as best you can, right? Sometimes you can just draw a straight line going through. And this will give you an idea of where the top of the bottle should be in terms of evenness or symmetry, okay? The top of it is an oval as well. And don't worry, I'm gonna do the details in a minute. Okay. I feel like the neck should be a little longer, so I'm gonna drop this down a little bit more. I'll add the detail stuff on the neck in a minute. I just wanna get the general shape of our bottle down first. Okay. And then if you need to erase anything, obviously go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna erase the lines I don't need or don't want.
and we also want it to be proportional right so see this lump and this curve they're not the same so I want to make sure that they're as even as possible That's looking better. Now let me go ahead and add the top of the bottle a little bit, make that a little better. The majority of the detail will be with the charcoal. So there's kind of like a lip at the top and it sticks out a little bit, right? And then it comes in like this on both sides and then sticks out again. And then another kind of lip there. Okay. Now that we have the general shape and structure of our bottle and you've erased any lines you don't necessarily want uh, let me add the shadow and the shadow just comes out and straight down this way the other thing I'm gonna add before I start throwing in some charcoal are these highlights reflections and these shapes inside of the bottle so if you look we have this bottom shape right then there's another shape underneath uh, <clears throat> and then there's these shapes right here these this big oval that starts from the top uh, not yet hold on Again, uh, Jair, don't get so fixated on little things right now, and, or in this stage at least, because these are just like landmarks, right? But yes, this part, these two parts or these sides are going to be the hardest to kind of get them to look the same on both sides. So keep that in mind. Oops, wrong pencil. Okay, and then I'm going to add this rough reflection shape or highlight. So this is essentially what you would be doing either for a painting, right? I'm going to make it a little thinner. Looks like I'm going to go back to when I first drew it. How does that look? A little better in terms of proportions and size. Okay. All right. Now we have our landmarks for everything. Right, and now we can go in. Oops, you know what? This. So what's wrong with this part, by the way? When you compare that to the this part, what did I do wrong? When you look at this part and compare it to this one. Hello. Correct, thank you, Lexi. Instead of curving down like this, it should be curving the opposite as Lexi stated, upwards.
and make sure that it sticks out a little bit from the neck of the bottle, All right? All right. Now we're ready to go in and start using the charcoal. Remember, as I said last year, once you go super dark, you can't go back. Or super black, you can't go back, right? So you have to be aware of that. Also, keep in mind the lighter areas, right? Which are going to be like these highlights over here, right? And along this side. I, again, have a heavy hand, so I tend to start in the darker areas. Darkest part of the bottle is where? The bottom, yes, down in here, okay? So down at the very bottom, especially where it touches the shadow, that is their darkest part. You can go ahead and either A, grab the stick and put it on there, or B, go ahead and grab the pencil. I like to use the charcoal stick for the big areas, okay? And the smaller areas, I use the pencil. Um, as you're using this, be mindful of the dust that you're creating on your paper. Don't do this with your, with your hand. You will smear it, okay? Two ways of doing this, either blowing it off or taking your piece of paper and tapping it on the, pa on the table so it falls down off of the paper. All right, so now this is probably like a number six down in here in terms of how dark we need to go right in there. Okay, so I'm making it super dark, pretty black, All right? And then if you notice, there's a pretty strong line right in there. And that's this line that I drew. And then it gets a little lighter, right? So above it, just gonna lightly or er, put a little bit of charcoal there. Now I'm gonna grab the tissue or the toilet paper in my case. Here's how I use it, because I'm gonna use my finger as like the point. Um, I have average size fingers, I would say, and I'm just gonna wrap it around my uh, finger, the toilet paper and I'm gonna spread it. Now, don't put a whole lot of weight or pressure on here. Just enough to kind of spread it out. And remember, you can always add more. And then spread it. So last year when we were shading with pencil, remember how I would tell you not to use your finger because we have oils? So that's the case when you're using graphite, okay? When you're using charcoal, the charcoal is pretty strong and pretty thick enough to where you don't necessarily have to worry so much about the oils in your fingers because they won't overpower the charcoal as much. But don't get carried away with only using your fingers. I like to have a good balance. And that might be a little too dark, right? It's gonna grab my eraser, just lightly drag it. So you can do this with either the eraser or if you wanna pick up more of it, go ahead and grab the tissue and put a little bit more pressure in it to kind of rub off some of it, okay? Be mindful that See how it's getting kind of dusty in there? Don't go and smear it. Again, the best way to do this, tap your paper onto the table like that so it falls on its own. We use gravity. Or you can also just blow, blow it off your page. 
make sure you're not blowing it off into someone like your sibling's face so they don't inhale that in their nose their nostrils okay all right now grab the charcoal stick and we're gonna do what do you guys think is darker the center space or shape or the sides Yeah, the center is darker. So you're gonna just go ahead and grab the charcoal stick and put some charcoal down. And then take the tissue, kind of get a nice even coat or layer. Don't worry so much about how I went off the edges. Don't worry so much about that right now. Okay. Let's focus more on the correct values first. Then we will do the cleanup details after. I'm going to use my finger on this one. So just like when we're shading with regular pencil, you want to fill in those little white cracks that you see sometimes. So like you see, like in here, right? You wanna fill those in. So it's a nice even layer of that value, okay? All right. So this bottom part is the darkest part of our bottle. Then it's this part. Um, we might, I might have to make this a little lighter, but it's not a big deal right now. Okay. And now I'm ready to go over to the. Um, well, actually, where's what are some dark areas that we still have? Where else is it dark? top yes so the rim up here right now that space we're gonna have to use the pencil just because it's a little smaller be mindful of the amount of pressure remember if you have it sharpened to a really fine point it's going to break I would say don't sharpen it more than this point and then when you do use it be mindful of how much pressure you're applying um, left-handed people like myself be mindful of how you're putting your hand on your paper. So put it on the white part, not on the charcoal part. Okay. So the, the dirtiness of the charcoal, if you will, kind of is a turnoff for some people, but it's more about just getting used to it. Plus, if you're not getting dirty when you're making art, then you're not making enough art. <laughs> At least that's what I've been told sometimes. Okay, so I'm looking, and if you notice, there's this little upside down, or this curve down there that's very prominent. I'm gonna bring that in. Essentially, everything in our bottle, though, is going to be shaded. Everything in our bottle will have some charcoal on it. Okay, so don't feel like, oh, I need to stay inside of that line, whatnot, inside of the bottle. We do wanna stay inside of the outline of our bottle. We don't want it to smear out, okay? But don't worry about the inside if you accidentally went in, into another space that you weren't planning on. We will be using the eraser as a drawing tool as well. <clears throat> and then tissue. See, I already accidentally went out of that space there a little bit so be mindful before I continue I'm just gonna erase that so you can erase charcoal as long as it's not something this dark 
Okay. And then I'm just going to lightly put a little bit of value along here. Because if you notice, there are little highlights, one there and one there. And then the top. Now I go ahead and take my tissue again. Can you mix pencil with charcoal? Yes, you can. Okay, And we can use that um, for the details when we're ready for that, but we're not ready for that yet. Okay, so continue adding charcoal in the darker areas along the top of the bottle in the neck. Oh, and just to kind of show you what it should look like at the end of this, let's do wine bottle and charcoal, just so that everyone knows the direction in which we're moving towards our something similar to this, because this is on a white paper. This can also be done on black paper or gray, which is what this drawing is. And gray would be this drawing here, All right? So glass can be difficult. I was thinking of using a clear glass bottle, but that sometimes is a little too, too tough because of all the reflections. So that's why I chose a green one like we have here, okay? So that's what we're going for, these types of uh, bottle drawings. Um, this is a different angle though. This is kind of looking a little down at it. This one that we I've chosen is a little more eye level. Okay. All right. All right. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of charcoal on either side and getting a good base of value in those areas before I start lightening things up. Remember to let me know if you have a question or you need me to show you something twice. Do not outline the bottle, the whole bottle. One of the common things that people will do is they'll go straight to the pencil and start outlining everything. Remember, not everything has an outline, which is again why I don't have you do that. There will be some outlines, but that's more of a detail that you wanna kinda wait till the end to do. Another thing for the amount of pressure when it comes to the tissue, if you put too much pressure, you're going to start rubbing the, the um, tissue paper off. And you'll get these little uh, lint pieces coming off. Okay. All right, so it's getting there. It's getting there. Remember to constantly look at the object that you're drawing, in this case being the bottle. So I'm looking at this edge here on the left. If you notice, it's a little darker, and then it gets a little lighter, and then it gets darker again. Okay, and so that's what I'm kind of looking at right now and putting that down. So it's dark, light, dark. Right?
one of the hard things with charcoal besides the mess is getting the details nice and clean without it looking sloppy and that sometimes just takes time and practice with charcoal all right with bigger areas i go ahead and use the charcoal stick the tissue hope you guys are noticing that I'm rotating my paper to make things easier And you may be noticing that you may be having some smudges on the background. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about too much. The key is not making more or darker smudges. Because remember, those can erase, just not super dark like something like this. So I'm getting a nice little base coat of the value. And spreading it around with the tissue. And then get into the habit of every, I don't know, every five, ten minutes doing this to your drawing. So you get that charcoal off, that dust. Okay. And so it's slowly going, right? use my finger in this one so the the thing that we're trying to capture too with the bottle is making it look 3d right the more values you have the more 3d it'll look and it has a lot of reflections on it right like I might have gone a little too dark on there so I'm gonna grab my eraser any eraser works I'm just using this kneaded one if you want me to show you I'll use this one too which everyone is used to. Uh, be mindful that you're gonna have to most likely clean your eraser a lot, right? So remember, easy way of cleaning an eraser is just erase on the table until it's clean again. All right. And here, let me show you how we're gonna just make those highlights a little bit more noticeable with the eraser. So it's not, I won't be able to do the same thing in this dark area as much, but I can do it on this side because it's lighter, right? So after you put down a coat or a layer of the charcoal, you can go in and just lightly drag the eraser on top of it to make it lighter if you need to. Okay, and that's how we're gonna be adding the details. But again, don't be so focused on the details just yet. When I draw, I like to put like a good base of values down. And then after I have a good base, then I'll start to do the, the details. Now, that is not the only way of doing this or any drawing for that matter. Some people like to go literally space by space by space by face, and they don't move down until they finished one section. I don't have the attention span for that. I'll be honest, which is why I do kind of um, the whole general space first and I slowly start adding more and more details to it as I'm going along my drawing, okay? And so that's why I'm saying that's the way I do it. I'm not saying that you guys have to do it that same way. That's just an option. Um, I'm gonna go on a limb and say that probably a good amount of you have uh, may not have the attention span of doing it piece by piece by piece, which is again another reason why I go ahead and, and do it, show you this way. 
Or what do you guys think? Am I wrong? On that assumption? All right, I'm going to go over to the right side of my bottle and do the same thing that I did on the left. I'm not done with the left, by the way, but I at least I have a good um, base of the values that I want. Let me just make this a little lighter. So I'm looking at the picture, and it should be a little lighter. Clean my eraser. Remember when you clean your eraser to get those shavings off so they don't accidentally end up on your drawing and ruin it. All right, and then same thing on the right side. Add charcoal. I'm not adding a lot of pressure. Okay. Tissue to get a nice coat or layer, even layer on the right side without going too dark. Just like when we shade with pencil, we want to have a nice, clean, smooth transition between values without having these like specks or smudges, right, that we have. And sometimes that is due to the tissue. Like if you're doing it too hard, it's leaving those little marks. And so you have to work through that to get a nice even value. <laughs> You'll hear me kind of blow onto my paper every now and then to again get the dust the charcoal dust off. Okay. Alright, so are you guys seeing how it's slowly starting to come to life? I do need to fix this side. So if you notice, this side looks a little better than that. It's because this one has a little better, uh, more values on the left than it does on the right. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is the type of paper you're using makes a difference. If you're using photocopy paper, you might have a little more difficult time with the charcoal. Remember that paper has what's called a tooth to it, meaning texture, right? So this paper is a little thicker than photocopy paper and it has some texture to it that texture allows the charcoal to stick to it. So if the paper doesn't have a lot of texture to it, then the charcoal is just gonna kinda slide off the paper. So again, if you're using photocopy paper, if you're using notebook paper with the lines, same thing, you're gonna have a hard time getting the charcoal to stick to it. And so you want a little bit of texture on your paper so that you're able to um, have the charcoal stick to it. All right. All right, let me go ahead. I went a little too dark here, so I'm gonna lighten it up. I'm gonna start bringing up this line 
down here. Almost, I thought at first it curved up. It's actually almost straight across if you look at it. And so with the eraser, I'm literally just erasing a line across. Now I'm just starting to look at more and more of the little details that the picture has. I'm starting to slowly bring those up. The other thing I'm noticing is this shape. Tapers in towards the bottom. That's a little too bright, so all I'm gonna do is take my finger, put a little bit of charcoal on there so it's not as bright. One of the reasons why I like charcoal is because I get to use my, my hands. Gives me a little bit more of a connection to what I'm drawing or uh, in this case. And sometimes when I paint, especially when I'm using thicker paint, I will use my fingers. Just adds another kind of layer or aspect to the artwork, at least for me. As cliche as this may sound sometimes, I feel a little more connected to the artwork when I use my fingers or my hands, my actual hands instead of like a paintbrush or a pencil. What do you guys think so far about charcoal? Yeah. What do you think about the messiness, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I'll be the first to admit I'm I'm and most of you probably already know this, I'm not a cheesy person. <laughs> And this being the first time for a lot of you that are gonna be using charcoal, don't worry about the outcome just yet, all right? More than anything, I want you to get used to the process, used to how charcoal works and how it doesn't work too. And a lot of you are pretty tough on yourself sometimes when it comes to trying something new and a lot of you will also be like, nah, I don't want to do this because I don't, I'm not good at it. Well, do you guys think I, I've been good at everything I've, I've tried when it comes to art? Heck no. One of the things I was really bad at using that I'll admit is uh, watercolors. I used to hate watercolors a lot. Like I wouldn't even try it. But then when I think, I forget, I was watching someone pretty well known David Cho is his name uh, pretty influential um, graffiti artist slash painter slash drawer he's like you know I you and he he's the type of guy who will try everything and anything and he I remember watching a video that he did painting using watercolors and he's like you know a lot of people bag or rag on uh, watercolors because they think A is childish looking or like a little kid is the or the only people that use it. But in reality, people hate it because they're afraid of it. A lot of times, <clears throat> watercolors are really tough because it's hard for people to control. And they don't hate not being able to control um, what they're using. 
um but he said that's like the best that's why it's so hard and that's why i think it's so so good to try because you rarely have any con full control of anything to be quite honest and so watercolors is more about learning how to play or fix those mistakes work with those mistakes as opposed to like giving up right off the bat and be like oh this is not coming out right let me just trash it which is what a lot of people tend to do and i'll be the first to admit sometimes i'm that i'm like that but i try not to give into that urge of if something's not going right i try not to toss it or get rid of it right off the bat i'll just continue working on it continue working on it if it comes out bad so what at least i made the attempt of doing it and that's part of the whole practice which is why i'm always very um i'm always pushing you guys to try something new when it's your sketchbook stuff right or that's why i'm also showing you guys more materials to use this is a very rough look for it still okay Jair, if it's whack is whack i mean if you always have that mentality though then everything will always be whack and you won't ever um try and work at something so that's part of the reason so keep that in mind right and that's part of why i mean why you guys are so hard on yourself sometimes and most artists are like i'll be the first one to tell you i rarely make something that i 100 percent think it went amazing it's super rare there's always like a couple things that and people may not be able to see it in my work but i know it's there because i worked on it and same thing with you guys sometimes and i, I guarantee i've seen some of your guys' artwork from last year and be like oh that looks good but then you're like nah it's crap because of this this and that which i didn't see at first but they're not like big things that you I think you should be worried about okay so be aware of that for everyone and that includes myself so today was mainly more of getting down the charcoal a good layer of it on Friday we will be doing the details um, but I want to finish doing uh, the shadow so for the shadow it should not be as dark as the bottom right what number would you guys say the shadow is down here in terms of the value are we talking three two four five definitely not a six because a six would be as dark as the bottom yeah i'd say between yeah i'd say between a two and a three Maybe closer to a three. So let me get a, a layer of it. Remember, we want a nice even coat. And now, right now I'm going a little dark, but then I'm gonna lighten it up with the eraser. And I only went a little darker because I want a nice even layer of this value. And now I can go into it with the eraser. lighten it up a little bit actually I need to lighten it up more there you 
see how it's getting lighter. I'm not adding a lot of pressure, by the way. Just enough to kind of lift up some of that. You may find that you'll be using your eraser more for this than you have when if you were using the pencil in terms of uh, drawing with the eraser, not erasing like a mistake. Okay. I think this is a good place to stop in terms of drawing so that on Friday we can do the details and if you did not have the materials today, gives you some time to pick it up at school. Okay.